Bill Gleason and I go back many, many years. His scholarly works are well known to most any serious student of Aikido. Bill, thanks for being with us. Summarize in two ways. First of all, where do you start in your practice? All right, now, in the terms of O Sensei, uh, he said, if you don't stand on the floating bridge of heaven, you can't do Aikido. What is that? Right, quite, it's, it's the floating bridge of heaven is your verticality, your two sides, your front and your back, six directions that he said to expand in. So standing on the floating bridge of heaven means to have a stance which is relaxed and is expanding key in all directions. That's where your practice begins, this stance, and then you have to start learning how to use the balance of opposites. The, the, the message, which is, the, which is really ties into everything that Osensei was saying spiritually as well, is that you have to become one with or blend with the energies of heaven and earth. And what does that really mean? It, it means to be the universe, as he said. Right? And to be the universe is to get rid of self. So you have to get rid of ego. You have to allow yourself to be independent but not separate. That's nice. Okay. Uh, so you never put yourself against your partner in your practice. Your gauge is what Osun say called uh, Masakatsu Agatsu Katsu Hayabi. Masakatsu is correct practice in my interpretation. Agatsu is to teach yourself. In other words, to get rid of the ego, to get rid of the competition, to, to work on being the universe, to work on blending. It's just, just, start with, just start with heaven and earth. Just, just that being vertical in your practice, because every time you start trying to compete with somebody or muscle something or do any kind of, you've already lost your verticality, right? So just start with that. I mean, my teacher never, like different than a lot of other teachers, didn't allow you to do techniques with force. If you did them with force, he would stop you right now. No, you can't, can't practice that way. And he was absolutely incredible. Uh, he was, his Aikido was the most beautiful I've ever seen. And he was so soft, and yet he was so powerful. And it, not being allowed to do things by force, over time, you could begin to, to feel that what is natural movement. I mean, in the end, you, you, your, your understanding, if it's going to be valid, if it's going to be real, if it's going to be whole, if it's going to be indestructible, it has to be both subjective and objective. Now, the subject comes from doing it and doing it and doing it. But at a certain point, you've got to objectively understand what it is that you're doing and why. And if you don't, you, you, it's not dependable yet. It is, you know it in your head. It is not rocket science. This is not so hard. To do it, it's a lot harder. But if you know what it is you're supposed to practice, it doesn't take that long. The biggest problem is not that you can't or can't, that you can't get it. Of course you can get it. The problem is that you must keep the beautiful and flowing form of Aikido with this in it. Don't let it degenerate back into jujitsu.